everybody video here for you today now I've talked about impacts on my channel for quite a while talked about the Greenland crater quite a while ago about a year and a half ago but some new research done up here in Greenland the Hiawatha glacier crater is right there let's just read about some new research being done out here also a fairly new report on fragmented comets in the earth and also what I think is an impact site right down here on the other shore of Greenland. I'll show you that in a little bit here. This is science. It just came out a few hours ago. I will leave the link below. It says Greenland drilling campaign aims for bedrock to trace ice sheets last disappearance. Talks about Greenland's ice sheet here, how much water it actually holds, enough water to raise sea levels by seven meters worldwide. It says in 2021, U.S. researchers will Go to the frozen expanses to pinpoint the last time it disappeared. The five-year, $7 million campaign awarded last month by the National Science Foundation will mark the first large U.S. ice drilling program in Greenland in more than 25 years. As a bonus, the effort could shed light on the timing of the asteroid or comet impact that gouged the Hiawatha Crater. Here is a video I made about a year and a half ago, showed the Greenland Crater the Hiawatha Glacier Crater, and 10 other impact sites. It says the 31-kilometer scar hidden under the ice that hit sometime within the past 3 million years. Some scientists think the event was recent and the trigger for about a global cooling known as the Younger Dryas that happened 13,000 years ago. But so far, no firm dates have been recovered from the crater. So maybe this new research will shed light on the timing of this impact site here in Greenland. So the impact site up there is just one of the things they will be looking into. It says the history of the ice is written in the rocks. It covers cosmic rays, create trace amounts of radioactive isotopes when they strike exposed rock and soil. Ice blocks these rays, so the resulting radioactive decay provides a clock for when the ground last saw light. In 2016, Schaefer used rocks from the site in Greenland here to show that ice covering the site melted sometime in the past million years, counter to prevailing beliefs that the sheet had been stable for several million years. Last year, preliminary work on dirt from another core in northwest Greenland, Camp Century, seemed to support that finding. So maybe they are getting to some answers here. I will leave this link below. Just came out this morning. Maybe they are overturning some long-standing beliefs of the ice up here in Greenland how long it's been around. The more I look into the Younger Dryas, I think we were hit by multiple impacts of many different sizes. I think there was electrical storms involved that were set off. I think a whole bunch of things were involved and this was even worse than we can even imagine. I mean, think about it. We lost a whole series of species of megafauna that had been around for hundreds of thousands or millions of years. This was truly a devastating thing that happened to the Earth roughly 13,000 to 11,500 years ago. This is Universe Today, and this story just came out in at the end of April of this year, so pretty new story. I'll leave the link below when comets break up. The fragments can be devastating if they hit the Earth. It says a new paper examines the potential hazard to Earth from comets that break into pieces. The author makes a case that Comet breakups could have a hand in shaping the ebb and flow of life on Earth. It can happen again. W.M. Napier wrote a paper last year, The Hazard from Fragmenting Comets, and that's what this is really based on. It says Napier gets right down to business in the introduction to the paper when he mentions the Younger Dryas boundary. The Younger Dryas was a period of cooling that occurred around 12,900 years ago to 11,700 years ago. Geological evidence shows a period of rapid cooling across Earth's northern hemisphere. And here is a graph that I'm sure a lot of you have seen. Here is our, over the last uh, several thousand years, here is our level of warming and cooling right here. Here is our current trend just in these last few graphs over the last centuries. If you go back here to the Younger Dryas, we had huge plunges and fluctuations in temperature that are still today kind of unexplained. As Napier writes in the paper, the celestial cause is supported by the presence of high concentrations 
at the Younger Dryas boundary of platinum-rich dust at 30 sites throughout the Northern Hemisphere. He also notes the presence of impact proxies such as glassy microspherals and nanodiamonds, as you see here, and an estimated 10 million tons of magnetic spherules argued to be of impact origin. There seems to be good evidence for worldwide impacts. Here is a video I did a couple months ago, Abu Herrera destroyed by a 12,000 800-year-old impact event, but new research certainly seems to indicate this place was taken out by an incoming asteroid or meteor or comet. Mr. Napier is a gentleman Randall has mentioned more than a few times, talks about his 2010 paper, but one interesting thing he says, it says in that paper, he also wrote that sub-kilometer bodies and meteor streams may present the greatest regional impact hazard on time scales of human concerns. That's what I think happened in the Younger Dryas period. I think we were hit by many, many, many things, some big, some small. And if you listen to Randall talk about Tunguska, it doesn't take a very big object to create a hell of a lot of damage. I think we were hit by small objects all over the world. I think that had just as much devastation as a large impact or a few large impacts this is a very interesting article, talks about comet trails and other things. Over time, the impact energy of the comet debris weakens. Good study done here. Learned a lot reading this. Also speculates on meteor hurricanes, speculates about an impact event that happened a little over 4,000 years ago in this area of the world. But it says the fact that a single comet could produce multiple meteor hurricanes is troubling and it's not only impact from large bodies that pose a threat, enough meteoric smoke may be created during such encounters to generate sudden coolings of some year's duration, along with widespread wildfires. Final sentence in his paper reads, the terrestrial upsets at the onset of the Younger Dryas boundary of 12,900 years before present and the simultaneous collapse of early civilizations around 2350 BC may have been triggered by events of this character. Now, I made a video last week on the Wanapate impact crater in Ontario, and questions I had with that one. That was about four or five miles across, but just check this out down here. This appears way too perfect to be formed any other way but an impact. I don't know, leave your comments below. Seems to have a rim that comes out of the snow on the northeast side of it here. That appears to be an impact crater. It's about three and a half miles across. Not huge, but six times larger than Meteor Crater in Arizona. Here is Meteor Crater in Arizona. There are the buildings down here to give it some scale. This is otherwise known as the Behringer Crater, about a half a mile across. This is not a perfect circle, but few Meteor Craters are. Seems to have very good symmetry, at least the rim up here and down here for sure. In kilometers, that's about five kilometers across that way. That is my video. I just thought I'd show you that. That appears way too fresh to be formed by a slow process. A couple sites up here in Greenland, maybe that new study will get to some answers as far as when the creator up here was created. New research on when this ice melted up here. Hope you thought that was cool. You all have a very nice day.